How, how, how? Merry Christmas Eve to all of you, whether you celebrate or not. If you don't, who gives a crap? It's cool. Don't. And it's not that big of a deal if somebody wishes it to you. That's all I'm saying. Anyways. Welcome to the second day of OTR Essential Christmas. Hope you've enjoyed this video series so far. Make sure you go and check it out. And subscribe. Smash that subscribe button. It's your first time checking me out. Today we're going to talk about who is better. I went to Twitter. At OTR Essential is a Twitter handle. And you should go there and follow me on there. Um, and I asked you guys who was better. I asked for wrestlers, promotions, shows, managers, commentators, etc. Angles, you know, you name it. Like anything professional wrestling. Give me two choices and I'll tell you who was better. So we're going to go through this. And I'm going to try and hit everybody's responses here. So this should be interesting. Let's go ahead and get started. MJ Make a Podcast says, Who was better at backstage politics when they were on top between Hulk Hogan or Stone Cold Steve Austin? Um, who in the fuck did Austin ever put over clean at Mania when it mattered? I mean, but then it's Hogan, man. Like, Hogan's like the architect of backstage politics. So you still got to go with Hogan. But I appreciate the fact that you bring up Austin because, yes, he absolutely was a significant player of the backstage politics. And doesn't get nearly the crap that he deserves for that. Understandably so, because of just how over he was and how big of a star he was in the position that he was in. Like, it makes sense, but you know, we got to call it what it is. Uh, Joseph Moran, Undertaker or Sting? Who's the better wrestling legend? Um, Taker. Taker. Because he did it on a bigger stage. Uh, Dalek of Chaos. Biggest waste of space in professional wrestling. The Memphis mid-card piece of crap. Yeah, damn it. Or, <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler. Biggest waste of space in professional wrestling has to be Ziggler. Because at least the Fangy created a company that gave opportunities to lots of folks in professional wrestling. Dolph Ziggler's just a high-paid jobber. So that's the bigger waste of space. Mark Whalen, 67. Better badass babyface. The tribal chief. Or, yes. When you start off the question with better badass babyface, and the options are the tribal chief, or the answer is it stops there. It's the tribal chief, okay? I don't technically threw out Stone Cold, but I like my badass baby faces that don't beat women. That's all I'm going to say. Valfan0531, Starcade 97 versus Starcade 98. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh. Oh my god. Sting versus Hogan and. 97 with Bret Hart <laughs> versus 98 with the streak ending. Oh, golly. Ugh. 97, because the payoff was better. Because at least Sting won the world title for WCW. Disco Stern, Royal Rumble 2004 or 2005? In other words, the Invisible Man wins versus Vince blowing both quads. Uh, it's Vince blowing both quads. Come on now. It's not even close. Uh, he also asked on commentary, Gorilla Monsoon or Bobby the Brain Heenan? Uh, I'll take Bobby the Brain Heenan. That's a really tough question. Like You're also comparing different roles here. Like You're talking about play-by-play -play versus color commentator. Like You'd have been better off asking me if I would have taken Ventura or Heenan. That would have been a different conversation. Dave G says, Shark Boy or Stone Cold? Give me a show, yeah! <laughs> Shark Boy, an example of great parody character in wrestling. Yeah, you know what the answer is, and unfortunately it's not Shark Boy, but i just glad you asked because that one time I could sit there and say, Give me a show, yeah! <laughs> um, JR and King in the Ruthless Aggression Era or Cole and Taz in the Ruthless Aggression Era? I probably would lean a little bit towards J.R. and King. Um, 15 Reasons Why Randy Orton Sucks Video or 15 Reasons Jeff Jarrett Sucks Video. Which video did you enjoy making more? I enjoyed making the Orton one more because it pissed people off more. It got more of a reaction. It got more heat. Like the other guy sucking. I only came up with 15 reasons, you know, just off of the top of the head. I could have come up with dozens if not hundreds of more. 
Uh, but that was back in May of 2011. The video is unfortunately no longer up anywhere. Um, but that was my favorite video to make because the timing was perfect. Like everything lined up. He had just beaten Christian um, at the SmackDown taping two days after the pay-per-view for the World Championship. Like tied into the Breakfast Club business crap that I talked about. Like it was everything. So that was my favorite. Uh, favorite horsewoman or horseman between these two, Barry Windham or Arn Anderson? Arn Anderson. Kane or Big Show? Kane. Uh, Principal NYNB asked the better overall wrestler, Brett or Owen? It's Owen Hart, and if you don't like that, I'm going to kick your leg out from under your leg. Got it? You got it? Yeah. Uh, we were solely going and throwing in, if you had asked me about 1997, Brett, I'm taking that bread over just about anybody in wrestling history. Because that was real. That was believable. Like, he was coming across as like a whiny, bitchy jerk, and it was real. Uh, I love 97, Brett. Uh, better technical wrestler comes from WESWE122. The Invisible Man or Kurt Angle? Uh, <laughs> I'll take Kurt Angle. Uh, Jonathan Gonzalez, I got to the better promo, The Rock or The Macho Man? Uh, the Rock. Blown Invasion, or Blown Angle. The Invasion Angle or the Summer of Punk? My like Summer of Punk was really bad, but Invasion Angle was so bad it literally hurt fans' feelings and drove away millions of people and they never came back. The Summer of Punk was just one of many failed opportunities during the PG era. The Invasion Angle hurt wrestling for decades. That's by far the worst of the Blown Angles. Uh, WrestleMania 3 or WrestleMania 5? This comes from P Kingpin Bonnie. Uh, WrestleMania 3. WrestleMania 3. Although, you know, WrestleMania 5 certainly holds a special place in my heart because that's where the Mega Powers exploded. L. Harris Swan. Who's better at maths? <laughs> TNA Scott Steiner or Psycho Sid, a.k.a. Twice the Man? Woo, baby! <laughs> now you get to the real nitty-gritty, the nuts and bolts. It's still got to be Scott Steiner. Like... I understand what you're saying about Sid, and that promo was majestic and fantastic. As you know and I know that you are half the man that I am, and I have half the brain that you do. That's less math equation and more just total domination of professional wrestling interviews and promos. You get what I'm saying? Whereas Scott Math, Scott Steiner broke down the math and told you the odds of Senor Joe at sacrifice. Uh, wrestling rants, better at being dead. <laughs> Dino Bravo or the Invisible Man? <laughs> Dino Bravo because he's been doing it longer. Uh, horror Movie Review 73, WrestleMania 10 or WrestleMania 14? WrestleMania 14. Better performer, Mick Foley or Roddy Roddy Piper? You know, certainly Roddy Roddy Piper knew how to get heat. But I thought he was a little kind of one-dimensional in terms of he had to be a heat guy. Roddy is a babyface. I always felt it was like it made sense. You could do it for a period of time, but he was always best as a heel. Um, but Foley could do both. Foley could be different characters. He could come from different approaches and different mindsets. Piper was great, but Foley was better. Uh, who's the better big man high flyer? Uh, Sid or yes. Yes, Sid. That's it. You don't even need to ask. Who's the better big man high flyer? Sid versus the world. Sid always wins. I mean, for crying out loud, he got up on the second rope at Sin 2001 and took that plunge to destiny, giving that big, vicious, big boot to Scott Steiner because Johnny Ace asked him to expand his own. <laughs> and Sid's sitting there and he's giving his body to professional wrestling, not the softball that he loves. The match continues, and Steiner sits there, bumps into his leg once or twice. So you got Sid sitting there laying in the ring. Ah, his leg bent three ways from Thursday. It's Sid. I have mean no disrespect to Bam Bam or Vader, but Jesus Christ, come on, it's Sid. And then, <laughs> Jake the Surgeon, Vince's double quad tear, or Sin Cara's running Patel disaster. <laughs> That's Survivor Series 2011. <laughs> <laughs> what was better, Vince's double quad tear. I mean, Sid Carter's running patella tear was magnificent and fantastic, but it doesn't compare to tearing both quads at the same time, just getting into the ring. Like, that's magnificent, man. I mean, you just can't, 
you can't do better than that. Um, more, more, more of you have responded. So cool. Which wrestling promotion was more influential? World Class Championship Wrestling or Extreme Championship Wrestling? Um, Extreme Championship Wrestling. Also, the bigger slut, Sonny or Missy Hyatt. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, Missy Hyatt. Who is the better wrestling legend, Rock or Austin? I think Austin is more synonymous with that era, so you probably have to give a slight edge to Austin. Um, Mike Rout asked, Mr. Rout or Metal D? Holy hell! Um, Metal D certainly has Mr. Rout in the area of wrestling knowledge and expertise and experience and knowing the history of the business. He's got that. You know, and he also kind of had that I look like Tony's dad type of vibe. But what Mr. Rout used to have was the ability to get heat. Like, real meaningful heat. And not even necessarily by design. Like, it was natural. Mr. Rout could just get heat. People legitimately hated him and can't stand him. Such a nice guy, too. And people just annoyed to tits with him. It was unbelievably magnificent. And I wish that Mr. Rout would have fully, truly embraced that and not always just looked for acceptance and people to like him because people would have liked him and respected him a whole lot more if he really, truly went down that heel type of I love heat, give me all the heat type of gimmick because that's where the money is made, folks. Like some of the great legends that have done it on YouTube talking about wrestling like Wrestling Jesus. Like, he, that dude could absolutely get heat. Like, that's a legit legend, old school. I could get heat too back in the day. I can still get heat if I really choose to. But in terms of purely natural, like there are few that were better than Mr. Rout at getting natural heat. You know, whereas Metal D was good on camera and... You know, I like the way that he talked about professional wrestling, his mindset, his understanding of the history, his knowledge. That was great and wonderful. We could always have that. Give me Mr. Rout's ability to get heat any day of the freaking week. Um, this is uh, C Classics 86. More impactful legacy, Scott Hall or Razor Ramon? Uh, I think it's Scott Hall. Uh, Jack Harper Games 90. Eric Bischoff? Or Vince Russo, booking and creative-wise? I'm going to go with Bischoff, because for Bischoff, he had to be the one that made the decisions. Like, Vince Russo could write stuff, but he still had the Vince McMahon filter. That doesn't mean in his peak that Vince Russo didn't come up with great stuff. And it annoys me when people try to dismiss things that he contributed. You know, those shows were great back in the day, and he was a lead writer. Like, he had to be doing something right, folks. But he also had a filter. Bischoff was the filter, and I'll take Bischoff, um, in their peaks, that is. Uh, Mukahed Killink, the tribal chief or any member of the breakfast club? I'm going to hit me to my core here, but it's the tribal chief. Like, he's the hero. Uh, Horror Movie Review 73, Mr. Fuji or Paul Bear? Depends. Are we talking about Fuji Vice, Mr. Fuji? Because then it's Mr. Fuji all day. Otherwise, as a manager and talent, Paul Bear. Uh, then Mukahid Killink asked, Triple H or Brett? Um, one is God, one is Bret Hart. I will always side with God. Uh, WAPW underscore wrestling. Corporate rock or Hollywood rock? Like Corporate rock is what helped establish him as a top guy. Hollywood rock was peak rock. <laughs> I'll be sure to come back when the Lakers beat the Kings in May. <laughs> like, that was the rock. Like, he could sit there and piss you off with a smile on his face. Like, Hollywood rock was fantastic. One of the most fun heel acts in wrestling history. Sports entertainment enthusiast, best manager, Bobby Heenan or Jimmy Hart? I'll go with Bobby Heenan, Cairo's older brother. Face Roman or heel Roman? Well, right now we're talking about Face Roman is the tribal chief. Face Roman is the tribal chief. 
So I will absolutely take babyface Roman versus that previous version of heel Roman that a lot of the fans didn't like. He was the obstacle and the barrier. Like, no, give me current babyface Roman. Uh, Shawn Michaels or Kota Ibushi, two of the greatest in-ring performers of all time. Shawn Michaels. Abushi, really? Uh, finally, Taker or Flair in terms of relevancy and longevity? Um, personally, I think it's Taker. He was better. Because, well, I didn't necessarily maybe have all the same pressures as Ric Flair. I didn't have the same opportunities in terms of world champion and length of time and durations and number of instances of being world champion. Like, Taker had more versatility in his character. Like, you got to a point with Flair, you've seen him once, you've seen enough of him. Like, Taker, you always felt like he'd get something different out of him. Uh, Callum Burgess is also asking Brett or Owen. It will always be Owen in my mind. To hell with Tony. He always used to sit there and try to insinuate it was Bret Hart. Uh, Keys 10 asks, Taker or Hogan? Um, not only focusing on the wrestling aspects. Uh, Hogan. Austin or Rock? You know, like it's interesting because I think I just said Austin a little bit earlier, but then I could also flip back and forth to The Rock. Um, you know... WWE some did some of his best to business when Austin was on the shelf, so I guess I could also say The Rock, but Austin's the one that's ultimately associated with that era of time. Jericho or Angle? I'll take Angle. Uh, Harlem Heat or The Nation? Uh, the Nation. New Jack or Sandman? New Jack. Which was the better show? WrestleMania 17 or WrestleMania 27? <laughs> Fuck WrestleMania 17. Uh, that was still the better show because... WrestleMania 27 was really, really bad. That's one of the five or six worst WrestleManias of all time. Legitimately. It was so god-awful and terrible. Um, what show was a better viewing experience? WrestleMania 17 back in 2001 or WrestleMania 27 with the old Off the Rope Show crew in 2011? It's WrestleMania 27. That was a much better viewing experience. Um, Sid or Scott Steiner from Javier Tarbo? Like how do you how do you how do you choose between two absolute icons and legends of magnificence and train wreck like that? How do you choose? Uh, but I'm gonna go with Sid because everything that he did in wrestling, he was also a top flight softball player. So you know, if I bring him to the corporate outing, like we're gonna dominate in softball. You know, Scott Steiner's gonna be too busy sitting there at uh, right field, sitting there and flirting with all the chicks and all the moms and everything. So give me Sid. Uh, Michael Smith, Kevin Nash or The Big Show? Kevin Nash. Vader or Stan Hansen? Vader. Scott Steiner or Steve Austin promo-wise? Scott Steiner because you never knew what the F was coming out of his mouth. Harley Race or Ric Flair? Ric Flair. Jim Cornette or The Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart? Um, Jim Cornette. Uh, Platon underscore Kenny, Ruthless Aggression Era, which was better, SmackDown or Raw? I thought everybody understood that was SmackDown by a wide margin. Colton 587, Ultimate Warrior or Randy Savage? The Macho Man, Randy Savage. Ooh, yeah. Uh, Byron Andreas, Better Murder. Abdullah the Butcher in the Electric Chair by Mick Foley or The Fiend being Firewood for Randy Orton? The Marlboro Mafia on Dino Bravo. That is the only acceptable answer. <laughs> Alex Cruz. Daniel Bryan or CM Punk? Ooh, let's see who I can piss off here with this one. I think Daniel Bryan was better. I really do. Because I think as time went along in WWE, he became a much more versatile performer. Whereas with CM Punk, it was always like he always had to toe the line of the work shoot or shoot crap. He's always fucking whiny, whether he's a babyface or a heel. He was always pissy and whiny. Like, his ring work deteriorated, I thought, as years went along. Like, understandably so, to a degree. Uh, but, you know, his promos kind of got to be old after a while. Well, Daniel Bryan, I thought, showed more versatility of character. Like, he had different incarnations, different versions of him. So I will take Daniel Bryan all effing day long over C on Punk. Um, and then, I think that's it. Uh... Excuse me. Shahi Ahmed asked, who was better, Michael Cole and Taz for SmackDown's commentary or Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler for Raw's commentary? Oh, I think that's Jim Ross and JR for Raw all freaking day long. Are you kidding me? Yeah, exactly. 
Any last-minute ones come in? Ah, yes, Alexis Gonzalez, Brock Lesnar, Kurt Angle. Give me Kurt. Eddie Guerrero or Rey Mysterio. Uh, Rey Mysterio because his career lasted longer. Uh, Trish or Lita? Trish. Oh, Jesus. Who was the better draw, Hulk Hogan or Steve Austin? Hogan, and that's not close. No matter how many times Meltzer Magoo tries to say it was Austin, it was Hogan. By a wide margin. Length of time, number of television viewers that they could draw. Like, Hogan's the bigger draw. Easily. Easily. Bingo. Alright, so that's it. Looks like that's everything. So, thank you everyone for your submissions for Who Was Better. And if you enjoyed this, you know, I'm thinking about bringing this back as like a video series in 2021 and you you present like two, sh two shows or two promotions or two wrestlers, etc. And then I go at it with somebody on here and we debate who was better. Uh, if you want to see that, let me know on Twitter. Let me know in the comments of this video. Again, smash that subscribe button. Thank you guys for sticking with me and watching this. We got one more day of OTR Essential Christmas. And tomorrow, be, or excuse me, Friday, Christmas Day, I'll have that video up with a very special message for each and every one of my subscribers.